Hey everybody, Barry at SeaTech Review. I got a fun one today. I think I'm gonna rub some people the wrong way, but just hear me out to the end of this video because I wanna give you a perspective of about potentially the best V8 available and it's only got a year left in production. Let's do this. <laughs> 5.3-liter V8 in the GMC Silverado Chevrolet nameplate. It's been popular. It's been around for a very, very long time. What, 25-plus years now? Maybe since 1998, I want to say. When it came out, this thing was like class-leading, efficiency, um, a lot of good things. It's had its problems. But this is not the engine today I want to talk about that I think is the best V8 available in 2025. It's this right here. And I know what you're going to say. Are you freaking kidding me, Barry? This engine is tied to one of the biggest recalls in General Motors, one of the most expensive recalls in automotive history. I don't disagree with that. But here's some points I want you to consider. In 2025, they actually made the modifications to the crankshaft connecting rods that's supposed to not have the oiling issues. Okay, so will this engine not have the oil issue from 21 to 24 or below with the DFM? Hopefully not. Let's set all of that aside today and just hear me out to the end of this video. If this engine didn't have the issue with the recall and it also has some issues known for some lifter issues, if this engine is operating correctly, I think this is the best V8 available in 2025 in a 1500 pickup for a few reasons. 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque. But look at the torque curve of how it develops the torque. If you look at this, this thing actually builds torque at these lower RPMs, not much different than some of the boosted six-cylinder applications. But more so, once you use this engine like a truck should be used for towing and payload. The efficiency on this, I have seen towing is actually better than any of the other V8s in the market and the boosted engines. Our friend JB Review just did a very heavy towing video of a 6.2 liter recently at elevation, which it should be at a disadvantage versus engines like some of the turbo maxes and Duramaxes because this engine won't build any extra power. Definitely check out JB's channel because I love this heavy towing comparison he's doing right now. He's maxing out half tons and I think it's phenomenal. But look at the fuel economy he got with it. Look at the performance he got with it. It even blew his mind away and it even arguably competed with some of the diesel options. And why am I not specifically focused on the 5.3 liter today? It's actually an okay engine. It just doesn't have class leaning horsepower for a V8 uh, torque. It's just okay, it, it'll, it'll absolutely suffice, but I want something that's like class leading power today, which is why I kind of like the 6.2. But what about the warranty? The Turbo Max for 2025 and the three liter Duramax have a 100,000 mile warranty. Huge incentive to go with this engine over the 5.3 or 6.2 V8, I don't disagree. There actually is an engine that I think is probably a better V8 than the 6.2 and it's the GM 6.6 .6 liter L8T engine. But there comes with some caveats, and unfortunately, you cannot get this engine in anything but a Sierra or Silverado heavy duty. You can't get it in a 1500. Now, I want to show you why I think this is a better engine than the 6.2, and it'd be amazing if this were an option. Unfortunately, it's not. Is one area where I think General Motors could improve is right here. If we go over to Ford.com and build a 26 or 25 F-150, you could take a regular cab, two-wheel drive, short bed truck, boom. You can get it with a five liter V8 for $40,700. We go over to Ram's website. You can build a work truck tradesman, two wheel drive with the Hemi V8 for 2026 for $46,500. I've went through this and played with General Motors website. I can't get a V8 in a two wheel drive. I'm gonna show you right here. If we go regular cab, let's go regular cab, standard bed, go to model, only engine option in a two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive is the Turbo Max 2.7 liter, which is kind of wild to me because I think a lot of people that would prefer to have this truck would want it with a V8. I've tried every configuration here. You can get a 5.3 in a long bed, but you can't get a 6.2. 
The only way you can get it is you got to jump to a crew cab short bed. Can't get it in a work truck still. Can't get it in a custom. You can't get it in a custom trail boss. You can't even get it in a LT. You got to jump all the way to an RST. So you're literally $62,000 for starting price to get a 6.2 liter. Awesome engine, but man, they're making you pay for it. Here's another really cool chart stacking up General Motors three different gasoline V8s. You got the L84, which is the 5.3 liter V8, the standard V8 in the 1500. You've got the L87, which is the 6.2 liter V8 that's under the recall. And then you've got the L8T, which is the 6.6 liter gas V8. Unfortunately, the, the beautiful green curves here, you can't get in a 1500 series pickup truck. Imagine if you could. Look at that big block torque under 2000 RPMs. And I, and I really want to focus in on this because if you use your truck as a truck and you're not just trying to race at every intersection, the power under 3000 RPMs is your daily. This is where you drive. This is when you come to a stoplight. This is where you feel the power. And this is why I've always been a big fan of the 6.2 because when I'm towing on the highway, my RPMs are hovering between 1800 and probably 2,500 RPMs. And if I can hit in that 350 to 370 uh, pound-feet of torque, that can get me down the road pulling a trailer most of the time without having to downshift. Whereas to hit that number with the 5.3, you're going to downshift because you're going to max out. And even at 4,000 RPMs, you never even hit above 320. And we've seen in some recent videos, if you guys watch my channel, check out the Ram 1500 RHO towing because it's got a live torque curve you can watch on your dash phenomenal there's a lot of time that engine is hovering at 350 to 450 pound feet of torque towing going down the highway you only need say around 150 horsepower or so it's all about this torque and this is another reason i'm a big fan of the high output hurricane because 350 to 450 pound feet of torque it doesn't even need to downshift so that motor rips uh in that area but i love Look at this difference from here to here. And this is why I like the 6.2 over the 5.3 is this gap right here for towing and day-to-day -day livability. But if you want that next step bigger, you got to go L8T. Unfortunately, you got to get a heavier truck with a heavy duty. So the part that's a bummer for me today is that I really wish General Motors would offer the 100,000 mile powertrain uh, engine warranty on the 5.3 and the 6.2. I think it definitely would provide some confidence to the V8 owner. With all that being said, and this is across the board, I wouldn't own any of these modern engines out of, out of a warranty, unless you're extremely hands-on and you've got some deep pockets for future repairs. It doesn't matter, I don't think, across the board right now. Any boosted six-cylinder, V8, they're all expensive to work on. Um, I would just have some extra warranty, and I've told people in other videos, get a 125, 150,000 mile powertrain warranty. Pay a little extra if you plan on keeping it for a while. Do your maintenance ahead of schedule. With that being said, I'd love to get your guys' opinion. What do you think about the 6.2 liter V8? I think if Ram put the 392 in their 1500, 485 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque, I think it'd be an incredible option for people that are searching for that peak performance. But the thing where I feel like the 6.2, the Gen 5 6.2 excels is going to be efficiency of fuel economy. It's going to get substantially better fuel economy than a 6.4, 392 and a 1500. But I'd love to get your guys' opinions. Um, it's, it's an engine in a truck I've always thought about wanting to have. Every time I tow with one, I walk away saying, you know, it's actually not a bad engine but I've always been a little bit afraid of lifter issues or now they've got this new oiling issue. Would I still buy a 6.2? I actually probably would consider it if it was under warranty. I'd even buy one used. As long as it's under warranty and I did a thorough analysis, I'd still consider one and maybe just do like DFM delete or something to hopefully uh, remove that issue of potentially oiling problems or lifter issues. But anyhow, guys, leave your comments down below. I'd love to get your thoughts. And if you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. It helps. Thanks for watching.